30 minutes, 30 days, one doctor and strength coach in search of optimal longevity. What if sitting in a hot room for 30 minutes a day could improve your heart health, improve your exercise recovery, and maybe even add years to your life? Well, we're putting that to the test. I'm measuring my heart rate, heart rate variability, blood pressure, blood work, and so much more before and after sauna and steam room exposure to see if those markers improve. But we're not just relying on my results. Does the science actually back up sauna and steam room exposure for health improvement? And if it does, how do we optimize our sauna and steam room use to get the most for our health? Let's find out. What made me want to do this experiment in the first place is finding some insane studies looking at the effects of frequent sauna use. There's a series of studies that was done on 2000 Finnish men. And in Finland, almost everybody saunas at least once a week, but up to four to seven times a week. And what these studies found was that the men who saunaed four to seven times a week compared to those that only saunaed once a week had much, much better health outcomes. One study looked at heart disease and all causes of death. What they found was that the men who saunaed four to seven times a week had a 50% lower risk of death from cardiovascular disease compared to those that only saunaed once a week. And those men who saunaed more frequently also had a 40% lower risk of all causes of death compared to the men who only saunaed once a week. That same study also demonstrated that if you sat in a sauna for greater than 19 minutes compared to if you sat in it for less than 11 minutes, you're also going to reap health benefits. Those that sat in the sauna longer had a 52% lower risk of cardiovascular disease and a 24% lower risk of all causes of death. And the benefits just keep coming when you look at further studies on these men. They also demonstrated that those who sounded more frequently had a 66% lower risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And finally, a different study on the same men also demonstrated that those who sounded more frequently had a 77% lower risk of psychotic diseases compared to those that saunaed less frequently. Here, kind of demonstrating the potential mental health benefits of sauna. And these are remarkable results. So I wanted to test them on myself and see in 30 days, could I reap any health benefits from sitting in a hot room every day? And to set up that experiment, I had to first decide what was my routine for sauna use going to be. I looked back in time and kind of found that for thousands and thousands of years, people have been using heat exposure to improve their health. Different cultures, in different countries and different people have done it differently, but the core value stays the same. And that is being exposed to heat on a regular basis improves mostly cardiovascular health, which leads to better health outcomes and better recovery and a better sense of well being. The most studied type of heat exposure is the dry sauna use in Finland, the studies that we just talked about. And these Finnish sauna baths are generally about 176 to 194 degrees Fahrenheit at only about 10 to 20% humidity. However, for ease of use, convenience, and cost efficacy, I decided to go with something called a sauna box, which is basically an at-home more of a steam room compared to a sauna. The sauna box basically gets up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, but is 100% humidity. So this is definitely more of a steam room versus the finished studies that we just looked at, which used a dry sauna of only 10 to 20% humidity. However, there are reasons to believe in the studies that a steam room could provide just as good of benefits as a sauna. One study in particular looked at dry saunas compared to steam rooms or the finished sauna compared to something that was closer to a sauna box with 100% humidity, but lower temperatures. What they found was that the steam room actually provided even more of a cardiovascular stress than did the dry sauna. And because much of the benefits from heat exposure come from giving your body a heat stress, and then adapting to it to provide better health outcomes, it would stand to reason that a steam room then, which provides a greater stressor, could even provide better health outcomes. So with that being said, I did feel comfortable using the sauna box or more of a steam room to get my regular heat exposure and hopefully provide me with better health outcomes. However, I still had to decide based on the studies, how long should I be in the sauna and how frequently? Well, what I ended up doing was using the Finnish way of sauna bathing, which is actually what they used in the study comparing the dry sauna and the steam room. Basically what you do is you get in the sauna for about 15 minutes, then you get out and have some type of cold exposure for maybe about five minutes. Then you go back into the heat exposure for another 15 minutes and there you go, 30 minutes per day. So with this protocol in place, I then had to decide which health markers was I going to measure over the next 30 days to see if I had any positive health outcomes from regular sauna use. Well, in the literature, most of the proven effects of sauna are in regards to cardiovascular health. First off is cholesterol. There have been multiple studies that look at sauna's benefits towards lowering LDL or that bad cholesterol. 
So I went ahead and had my blood work taken before and after my 30 days of regular sauna use. And here is my first baseline lipid panel. The next cardiovascular health marker that sauna has benefit on is blood pressure. Specifically, there are studies that demonstrate you can have an eight point lowering of your systolic blood pressure from regular sauna use. So I went ahead again and measured my baseline blood pressure with the intent of measuring it after to see how they compare. The next thing I wanted to track with an aura ring is my baseline resting heart rate, as well as my heart rate variability or a measure of how well you shift into that rest and digest state compared to the fight or flight state. Well, there's not a lot of studies on how regular sauna use affects this long term, although there are a couple studies demonstrating how you do increase heart rate variability directly after sauna use. So it'll be very interesting to see how these initial baseline results are all Altered in the long term over that 30 day period. Next, also with the aura ring, I wanted to measure how sauna could affect my sleep. And there are definitely studies that demonstrate that sauna improves people's subjective sleep experience. And there are some other studies that even prove that regular sauna use can improve measures of deep sleep. So I went ahead and averaged my sleep score from Aura, as well as my deep sleep and REM sleep markers to see how those would be affected by regular sauna use. And finally, I just wanted to subjectively measure how sauna would affect my post-exercise recovery, my performance in the gym, et cetera. There are definitely some studies that demonstrate improved athletic performance, as well as recovery post-exercise exercise. So I wanted to see if this would also play out for me. With all my initial data taken, we jumped into the experiment. And doing this experiment myself really taught me how heat exposure actually leads to positive health outcomes, the actual mechanisms as to how it does so. The first thing I noticed when getting in the sauna was how difficult it was to stay in there those last five to 10 minutes, especially near the beginning of the 30 days. Truthfully, it feels a lot like you're ending a long run. And this makes sense because a lot of the mechanisms as to how heat exposure causes long-term health benefit are similar to the mechanisms as to how aerobic exercise causes long-term health benefits. Basically, this is due to a principle known as hormesis, or basically your body responding to stressors and building you back up stronger than it was before so that if you arrive at that stressor again, your body is able to defeat it. How this works with heat exposure or with heat as the stressor is basically your core temperature starts to raise and your body doesn't like that, so it tries to dissipate that heat. How does it dissipate that heat? Well, what it does is sends all the blood to the periphery. It vasodilates or opens up the blood vessels near your skin so that all the blood can be sent there so that you can essentially then sweat it off. And because it wants to get the blood out to the skin faster, the heart also starts to beat faster. So this is why when you're sitting in the sauna, your heart is beating faster, you're sweating, your skin is flushed because you're trying to dissipate that heat. Your body is essentially trying to lower its core temperature. So over time, your heart then adapts to be able to pump more efficiently so that next time it can pump blood faster out to the skin. Also, your blood vessels become more elastic, more stretchy, which is great for preventing plaque formation and heart disease in the future. And these mechanisms are really why sauna, steam room, or any heat exposure has such great benefit on long-term health outcomes. An additional mechanism as to how heat exposure can improve long-term health outcomes is through something called heat shock proteins. In response to heat or other environmental stressors, your body releases more of these heat shock proteins. And these proteins are great at a few things which really help long term health. One is preventing protein aggregation, or essentially the clumping of proteins, which is found in a lot of long term disease processes, specifically neurodegenerative diseases such as dementia or Alzheimer's. Two, these proteins also prevent muscle atrophy. So you can imagine it could really help to do sauna post exercise or when you're unable to exercise to prevent muscle loss. And finally, these heat shock proteins are also directly linked with longevity, the higher expression of heat shock proteins, the longer the lifespan. And what's super cool is as you are continually exposed to heat in sauna or steam room, your body will continually increase your heat shock proteins. And this effect will not just drop off the moment you leave the sauna or leave the steam room. Your body will actually continue to express more heat shock proteins than it did prior to when you had ever been in the sauna. So that principle of adapting to stressors and also the increase in heat shock proteins are probably the one and two mechanisms as to how heat exposure can improve your health outcomes. And if you get in a sauna or a steam room for any amount of time, you'll quickly notice the next mechanism as to how it improves health, and that is through sweating. I was shocked at just how much I sweat sitting in that steam room. And I know because it's a steam room, 
A lot of it will feel like sweat, but it's actually just condensing water, but you are still sweating a lot. And the studies proved that for a dry sauna, you're losing up to about 1.6 pounds in a 45 minute period. And for a wet sauna or a steam room, you're losing about 0.8 pounds in a 45 minute period. And this amount of sweat is great for detoxification. There are a lot of studies that demonstrate that you lose a lot of toxins that are built up in your body through sweating them out. One is heavy metals. There are studies that prove that there are a decent amount of heavy metals that are excreted through sweat. The same goes for BPA, a toxin found in a lot of plastics. Also the same goes for phthalates or a toxin found in plastics, cosmetics, and food products. Also the same goes for organophosphates found in a lot of pesticides, which we then eat on our food. And finally, we also sweat out metabolic waste or urea or ammonia. So the more you sweat, the more likely you're able to detoxify from all of these toxins coming in from our environment on a daily basis. Outside of just learning about how sauna actually works and the mechanisms as to how it improves your long-term health, doing this experiment helped me learn more strategies in regards to really optimizing the sauna experience. The first thing that I really struggled with initially was hydration. Because I was sweating so much, I really found that I was dehydrated initially. My resting heart rate started to increase. I started to perform not as well in the gym. My fingers and my feet were just so dry. So I really then had to focus on replacing all my water that I lost from the sauna. And again, with losing about 0.8 pounds per sauna session, I had to really increase my fluid intake 16 to 24 ounces immediately after that sauna session to maintain proper hydration throughout the day. And for my skin, I also found it super important to moisturize my hands as regular heat exposure can definitely damage your skin barrier. Another thing I really had to focus on was my gut health. Initially, I had some problems with bloating or abdominal pain immediately after my sauna session, which this makes sense. The same can happen after aerobic exercise. Basically, what we talked about with all those blood shifts where it will now shift to your extremities instead of to your gut, now that also will help your gut become more leaky. And because you are applying a stressor, now you have an increased cortisol response, which can also cause your gut to be leaky. So if you're experiencing any gut symptoms when using the sauna, I'd highly recommend before you get in the sauna, having glutamine, vitamin C and vitamin E, all of which are great at inhibiting the inflammatory response that can come with heat exposure or with exercise, and then lower the risk of leaky gut causing that gut inflammation and then the symptoms. And finally, in regards to tips to optimize the benefits you get from sauna use, I would definitely recommend including a regular exercise habit with your sauna use. There's a lot of great studies on how sauna plus exercise really provides a synergistic effect on your cardiovascular health. And because it can also improve your recovery, like we talked about earlier, I would recommend that you do your exercise first and then have your sauna session after for the most optimal effects from your sauna experience. So with all those learnings and optimizing my sauna experience, did it actually improve my health markers in only 30 days? For cholesterol from the blood work, we found that my LDL decreased from 90 to 85 and my triglycerides decreased from 53 to 38. So for cholesterol, I would deem this a mild decrease, but still significant, and I'll count that as a win. For blood pressure, this is where I found the most effect. My blood pressure went from average of about 133 over 75 to about 127 over 71. And I found this to be incredibly significant. As someone who has borderline high blood pressure, this was a great effect for me and is truly a remarkable decrease for something that is not a medication. After all, blood pressure medications on average lower people's blood pressure by about nine points over six points. So to have a lowering of six points over four points from just this intervention over 30 days is a huge win in my book. For my resting heart rate, it actually increased from about 43 to 45. And this was a statistically significant increase, although still a very small increase. My hypothesis here is that it increased due to, again, not being hydrated initially in the experiment, and this essentially leading to prolonged periods of stress throughout the day. My heart rate variability on average went from about a 73 to a 72, which was no change statistically. And my sleep measures also did not change. Measures of deep sleep, REM sleep, as well as my overall sleep score all did not change statistically before and after sauna exposure. And what about my thoughts subjectively? How did it affect my post-exercise recovery and my performance in the gym? Well, for me, I didn't have too much of an effect, truthfully. I feel like I normally have pretty good energy in the gym and I'm not too sore normally, so I didn't notice too much of an effect here, but I would love to hear how sauna or steam room exposure helps you in these categories in the comments below. 
So overall, while sauna didn't really affect my sleep, heart rate or heart rate variability, or really post-exercise recovery or performance, what it did really affect was my markers of cardiovascular health. In only 30 days, I noticed a huge decrease in my blood pressure and a mild decrease in my cholesterol. So based on this and all the studies we talked about, I am definitely a sauna believer. And if you're impressed by these results and you're interested in buying a sauna box, help out the channel and use the link in the description below to purchase your sauna box. And to hear the supplement routine that I also use to improve my longevity, watch this video next.